one of the projects we worked on, which was the Whammer Down Clown that unfortunately didn't happen. But I'd like to showcase them um, on screen to the public for the first time in this interview. I think it'd be a good time to show those. <laughs> Before the video starts, I just wanted to give you all a little bit of information and something that's really cool happening for this particular episode of Channel 1031. So my guest for today is Skull Crane, creator and manufacturer of all sorts of spooky Halloween decorations. Well, he was generous enough to create a promo code just for this episode of Channel 1031. So if you go to SkullCrane.com and use code GMHaunt at checkout, you will receive 15% off your entire purchase um, that you are purchasing. All Halloween animatronics, all props, and even tabletops, anything you can find on his website applies to this sale. So again, if you go to SkullCrane.com, use code GMHaunt at checkout, and you will receive 15% off your entire purchase. Thank you so much to SkullCrane for creating this exclusive deal um, for my video. I really appreciate it, um, and I'm spending a lot of respect out to him for creating this deal. Without further ado, let's get to the video. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Channel 1031, the show where I interview other haunters about upcoming things in the Halloween community, or maybe things that they have coming up and things that they recently announced. For today, I have a very, very, very special guest. He has over 6,000 subscribers on his uh, YouTube channel. He has his own animatronic Halloween uh, selling company, and he very quickly sold out of his first ever exclusive animatronic. Ladies and gentlemen, my guest for channel 1031 today is Skull Crane Entertainment. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you very much. Looking forward to being on here, and thank you so much for the opportunity. So I knew I had to have Skull Crane on the show. Um, this was someone who I thought of right away as someone that he has a lot of opportunity for questions. Uh, a lot of people talk about him. There's so much to talk about. He has a lot of stories to tell. Uh, like I said, he has his own Halloween company. Um, and I'm going to go into that in the questions that I ask him. We're going to figure out how he really runs everything that he does um, and where he got to where he is today. So without further ado, let's get to the questions. All right, so we're going to start off the questions here. And my first question for Skull Crane Entertainment um, is what started your love for Halloween? So obviously, uh, you, there's a lot of things about Halloween uh, in your life going on. You have a whole Halloween YouTube channel. You have a lot of supporters on your YouTube channel that follow everything you do. Uh, and I wanted to start it off with a question um, that kind of will explain how you got started to where you are now and what maybe you'll be doing in the future. So yeah, the first question is what started your love for Halloween? That's an excellent question. I do have a story to tell about this. It was in about 2013 and I went to the flea market with my father and we sort of walked the flea market and I came across this Jemmy animated skeleton. And at the time I didn't know what Jemmy was or even really what Halloween animatronics were, but I thought the skeleton was super neat and it was actually playing um, this song and I really liked it. It was playing Super Freak. I thought it was super cool. So I, I went and bought it. I think it was five or $10, took it home. And then when I went to put the batteries in, I saw the name Jemmy, and mm -hmm. I remembered that name from my father's Big Mouth Billy Bass Fish, and I was like, whoa, that's the same brand. So after doing some research on Jemmy, it sort of looped me into Spirit Halloween, and I got super into it, and then the following year, I was begging my father to take me to Spirit Halloween, and that's where it all started, 2013, 2014. That, that's really interesting, actually. That's a, a really interesting story. Uh, and I try to like as many for as many of my guests as I can. I always love to start off with a question about how they really got started. And there's always different answers. There's always different ways on how people actually like all get connected into the thing we all love here in the community. Um, and it's really interesting to hear your part of the stories, not like anyone else's, um, and how Jemmy was sort of the thing that got you started. And, and that's a, a really fun story. Um, so these next sort of questions go along with one of the things. Um, that you're working on now, one of the things um, that your entire YouTube channel is based on. I see it on the logo on your shirt too, um, and something that's um, a, a big deal in your life. Uh, and obviously, if, for everyone who doesn't know out there, uh, you have a, a, your own Halloween company selling animatronics, Skull Crane, um, which your YouTube channel is named after. So the second question is, what originally made you want to start up Skull Crane Entertainment? What made you want to start up a company 
selling your own animatronics and kind of what was the idea of like I maybe I could try doing this to where you are now when you have a website and you sell animatronics you have merchandise a YouTube channel what kind of made you want to start doing all this another excellent question so how this all started with the YouTube channel was I would love watching Spirit Halloween in-store chores. In 2013, I would watch all those videos from all of our big YouTubers in the community, and a lot of them still do videos today, and I love watching those, and I wanted to get involved with YouTube. So I started up Skull Crane Entertainment in April of 2013. My first video was in December of one of my items in my collection that was very desirable. And from there, I just kept making more and more videos on the animatronics I'd been collecting. But then it came to a point where I had too many, and I also had no more money to spend on them because, you know, Christmas and birthdays are only once and once a year. So from that point on, I decided to sell them on eBay. And after selling them on eBay, I realized, man, I could really just build something out of this. And over the years, I sold more and more pieces. And that's when I launched Skull Crane Animatronics in 2017 at the time being named Skull Crane Halloween. And from there, I've just expanded my inventory, expanded my services and, and really built up an awesome um, company by the hunters for the hunters. Mm -hmm. But and also I can hear like from kind of what you were saying and then um, it's interesting because I'll touch on this again in my next question. Um, you kind of touched on how it's become, it, it's changed and gotten bigger and you've expanded your inventory and um, I guess I'll just actually go right into the next question because it's like goes al right along with what you were just saying on how it's getting changing and becoming bigger and bigger every year and how um, Skull Crane is becoming a, something um, that grows and grows. So the next question is how big do you want Skull Crane Entertainment to become? Um, and like, is it a thing where you want to have locations around the country, like uh, a, a full franchise of a company, or is it something that you want to keep sort of um, in your own neighborhood or a, a single store, sort of? How big do you want Skull Crane to become um, as a company? Another great question. I mean, everyone wants the most success for their companies, but for me, my dream would be to have one single storefront that's open 365 days a year and the one year on one day on leap years, of course. <laughs> um, but I would love to have one physical location where the repairs are conducted, where the 3D printing is conducted, where all of the animatronics are warehoused, a nice, big, super-sized location that haunters can go to every year. Um, one thing that the other competitors don't have is year-round locations at all. And I feel like if the haunters sort of had a way to go somewhere with year-round animatronics, year-round releases, and year-round displays, that'd be amazing. So my goal would be to have one storefront right here in my hometown of Chicago, and that storefront would operate again the whole year, and that would be the only location. Again, if it's successful, you start branching into franchises, and I could totally foresee this being something in the future. Again, that's probably at least a year or two down the line if we get there, and that'd probably be a pop-up mm -hmm. shop, if anything. Um, but with your support and from the fan support, um, it definitely can happen, no question. When the animatronics that I release are selling and um, repairs are going well it gives me enough cash flow to really reinvest because most of my income is reinvested into new products and I'm always looking to develop in the meantime I'm, I'm sure this being future questions here on this interview but I will be developing some new items for this year too that are entirely unique and I'm sure people are really gonna want to see these I'm definitely not done for the year I have some talented friends that I work with to have designs drawn up and it's gonna be quite an amazing year for Skull Crane so I do encourage everyone to check out what I've got and subscribe to the email list completely free and if if you want an inside look, I also have premium memberships available where they can check out all of the juicy details um, for some of the developments. And I will be sending you um, personally of some photos of um, one of the projects we worked on, which was the Whammer Down Clown that unfortunately didn't happen. But I'd like to showcase them um, on screen to the public for the first time in this interview. I think it'd be a good time to show those. Um, and these are just some behind the scenes photos that I showcase to my members and even in the email list sometimes you get to see stuff like this. So I would encourage anyone that's interested in the animatronic field and wants to be involved um, in a company by the Haunters for the Haunters to really consider visiting my website, subscribing to the email list and even looking to a premium package. Well, I'll say this, uh, obviously everyone watching, go check that out, everything he just uh, cited. It'll all be in the uh, top links in the description so you can go check that all out. Um, and sort of interesting, something I just wanted to touch on because you mentioned it honestly, uh, I think a 365 day a year Halloween store is a fantastic idea. Um, I, look, I know this. Looking at you, Spirit. Looking at you, uh, Home Depot Halloween. Um, if this, if any store um, that I love again, Spirit is just an example. Um, if they were open 365 days a year, I'm sure I would spend probably more money than I would want to. Um, so I think it's an, a fantastic idea 
of having a Halloween store that's open all the time because it would attract more business. The haunters, the people who buy everything they do, I mean, you can see some of it in my background. Um, the people who buy stuff all the time would love an, an, an in-person store that was open throughout the entire year. Um, and they would spend more money, they would be more excited, it would create more hype, and it would be more time to look forward to something when you can be there all throughout the year. Um, and there's some really cool opportunities for ideas there on changing things up throughout the year and kind of swapping what you're selling. Um, and I think that's such a, a cool idea um, that you're saying on how you would have a store that's open all year. It's a unique idea, it's not like anything we've seen before, um, and it would be fantastic to see someone doing that for the first time. Um, and I think that's really, really unique. Um, this next question, again, you kind of touched on it with Whammer Down Clown and then what ended up happening after that. This next question kind of ties into that. Um, obviously, people will know watching out there, uh, you recently released Kooky Clown, your first ever exclusive on the Skull Crane website, um, with your first animatronic. And I guess the, the, the question is, what was the whole release of Kooky Clown like? What was the process of you saying, I have an idea, I want to release an exclusive thing for this season? to the listing is published, it's up for sale, um, the demo is out. What was that whole process of thinking of the idea and then listing Kooky Clown for the first time? Yeah, sure. So Kooky Clown was a backup plan to Whammer Down Clown because in the middle of the process with the initial manufacturer, I was a little bit worried and skeptical on production time and completion time. And the photos I'm going to be sending you of Whammer Down Clown, um, they're basically just the, the final photos we ever got to see before the manufacturer ultimately canceled. And I had a backup plan. I didn't want to disappoint my fans. So um, we came up with Kooky Clown pretty quick. Um, we basically took some ideas and pretty much designs from the manufacturer that we were working with then. And and they drew it up and they made a couple of changes that I requested to their designs and at that point within a month it was released um, and it was awesome I mean I really like the animatronic it's a short little guy but it's got some cool detail and really latex is something we don't see on animatronics to this day at least of this quality and um, the process was was basically photos descriptions which i'm good at but i did work with a buddy to get some photos done that were very professional and you can see that video on my youtube channel it's got a couple thousand views now and i'm very grateful for that and all the likes on the video as well so the process ultimately wasn't as hard as whamber down clown because whamber down clown was entirely original while cooley clown was using other ideas from manufacturers or the one we were working with um so ultimately it wasn't a terribly difficult process, at least for me. I'm sure for the average person it would be difficult, but I was able to sort through it, get it done, and I'm looking forward to future releases that are much, much more exciting. So just stay tuned, everyone. Well, I'll say this. Kooky Clown was super detailed, and I actually I did a video reacting to Kooky Clown, um, I think the day it was released. Uh, and it was. It was so unique looking. Uh, the, it looked like it was amazing quality. The detail on it was fantastic. The outfit was really unique and not like anything we've seen before. And I think that was one of my favorite things about it, on the, the pattern of it. Um, and obviously the whole pumpkin kind of look to it was really interesting, because there are nothing, no animatronics that are like pumpkin clowns. Um, and it was really cool to see that, and probably my favorite part about it was the green eyes, because I don't know, I, I love green stuff, uh, and the green eyes were just so, so cool. Um, and it was a really cool release, uh, and the photos you're talking about were, came out awesome, the backdrop with it, the balloons, the table, uh, it, it looked really great, and the stock photos looked really professional, um, it, it came out looking really good as an overall release, um, and I just, I love seeing it on the website. Uh, the next question, again, uh, kind of goes along with this whole animatronic thing, uh, and how you're saying you're always planning stuff and you have more stuff coming in the future. Um, and the question is, do you have more Skull Current animatronics planned for the future? Uh, and do you, you have ideas or plans to eventually have uh, multiple animatronics in one lineup? and releasing multiple, multiple animatronics per season? Another great question. So this one all depends on how the haunters react to each and, each and every new product on my site. Whenever a new product is released, it depends on how successful that product is for me to have the cash flow to release new animatronics. I say this and say this again, um, if you do want to support the future of Skullcrane animatronics, then definitely check out the website and consider a purchase. This goes out to everyone out there um, because with each and every sale, um, it inspires a new animatronic to be released. And at the moment, I'm currently developing some really, really cool looking items. I don't want to go into too much detail on what they are, but they are very cool. And I know these will be a fan favorite, something that'll give Skullcrane some collection value. They're going to be designed to where um, they're going to have a series. There's going to be item numbers and things you can collect. So this will be a very, very fun little series. Again, 
Um, it's still in the development stages. Prototypes are in development, and that's all I can say. It's going to be amazing, so stay tuned again. Get on that email list. Get on that premium membership if you're interested. It's going to be quite a spectacular year. Um, this is just the beginning of what's to come. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, watching uh, Skullcrank game. A little sneak peek of what he has. Sounds really cool. There sounds like there's some awesome stuff coming uh, in the future of Skull Crane. Um, so you should definitely look out for that. There's some cool stuff coming, it seems. Like he said, go check out the email list. Go get uh, memberships. All of it will be at the top of the description. Um, these next questions uh, stray away a little bit from Skull Crane, but uh, another aspect of Skull Crane that you sort of mentioned in the beginning, um, and that is your repair service, that you have a Skull Crane repair service that you offer to people um, when they have problems with their animatronics. Um, and it's a really interesting aspect of your whole company and I wanted to ask about it so I threw in some questions about that um, and the first one is um, you repair a lot of these animatronics obviously um, and something interesting I wanted to ask was uh, who has the easiest animatronics to repair and which ones are the hardest um, as in companies which ones are like oh I can fix that one easy uh, versus ones that you get and even are a little bit of a challenge to you that's an awesome question. So yeah, the animatronic repair services are in full swing. My garage is stacked to the brim with boxes of items to people to repair. Now the easiest ones to fix are the jemmy items. They're very straightforward and they pretty much all have the same mechanisms, at least on the life sizes. The only problem is shipping those dang things is so expensive. So um, Jemmy animatronics are the easiest. Now the hardest are typically the techie animatronics because those techie ones are very intricate. Now techie is my favorite animatronic manufacturer but the, their stuff is so intricate and a lot of the gears they use are only on techie stuff. So you, sometimes you have to scrap other techie items to fix techie items. So techie stuff is pretty much the hardest thing to fix with Jemmy being the easiest. Yeah, so honestly, I don't, I'm not great at all at repairing animatronics. I repaired, I have a lot of broken stuff, um, but I've only been able to repair one and that's Marie because obviously she just had a, a snap band. So I took it off, I just gave it a new band and that was all it needed. Um, but that's the only one I've been, been able to repair, uh, and I have like a stack of animatronics that are just fully static, or have certain pieces of them broken, um, and I just, I, I just don't repair them, I leave them how they are. So obviously, a lot of respect to you, because you have obviously a lot of skills in repairing animatronics, uh, and like you're saying, you have so many of people sending them out to you, uh, and it's really fun to see all the videos you post on your YouTube channel on kind of like, broken to repaired um, after you work on them, and I'm always very, very impressed. Um, to see that. Um, so obviously, uh, much respect out to you uh, for having the skills uh, of repairing animatronics. Um, the next question goes back back to Skull Crane animatronics. It kind of bounces around here. Um, and the next one goes back to particular your Halloween animatronics and maybe the future things um, that you would like to work on at some point. Uh, and the question is, is there a particular manufacturer that you would like to work with in the future um, to produce your Halloween animatronics? Oh yes, absolutely, and that's going to be Techie Design. They're actually only about 40 minutes away here in Irwin Park. I'm located in Chicago, um, so it'd be excellent to work with them. I've been in talks with them a little bit, and I don't want to get too much detail because nothing's official yet, but if there is a manufacturer I'm going to work with, it will be Techie. That sounds uh, really cool. I'll tell you, I would love uh, a Techie Skull Crane collaboration. I think that would be awesome. Uh, I think with your team and your visions and Techie's uh, like factories and manufacturing, um kind of technicians i think it would be absolutely awesome to see the kind of stuff you could come up with um and overall i just i think skull crane has a bright future ahead i think you have some awesome ideas um that you could be releasing and i think there's a lot of stuff to pay attention to with your company i think a lot of people should be watching um to see what you come out with uh and obviously i'm just i'm very excited to see uh, what other things you have for the future plan i want to see what animatronics um you come up with uh, the one thing I, I want to ask you, I actually, this is sort of an idea that I just had now when I was just talking, I don't have this written down. Um, would there any be, is there interest from you on, at some point, kind of getting a team um, to help, well, I know you kind of said you have um, a team of friends and stuff, but would you, would you ever want to have a team of design people to work with, or does it seem like something that you kind of want to keep Skull Crane, uh, something that you create yourself and you kind of run, or would you ever want a team to collaborate um, to help you kind of ship stuff out, create ideas? Um, and if you if you did get a storefront, help you run a storefront? Absolutely. So for as long as Skull Crane is run out of my own home um, and storage units and all that, it's going to be just me. And I do have some people that I work with that are not my personal friends in real life um, that I do work with online for new designs and all that stuff and give them commissions for their work. 
But if, in terms of having a full on staff, that'd be something that comes down the line with a full year storefront. And I would definitely be interested in help when I have a storefront because believe me, I cannot run an entire store here in the beautiful city of Chicago by myself. So um, yeah, in the future with the storefront, again, that's if Skull Crane blows up and people are buying animatronics left and right, we get that store opened up with exclusives year round. Then yeah, it's going to be a full team, and who knows? Maybe I'll even hire some haunters if they live in the area. Uh, again, and one other thing that kind of comes along with that I just thought of: uh, Is there any also interest in ever doing? I don't want to say themes because I'm not uh, talking about spirit here. But um, is there any interest in like ever, if you did get a storefront, kind of building displays of some sort to actually um, showcase your animatronics and your items? Um, and like, it, I don't want obviously don't say anything you don't want to or. Uh, keep everything a surprise, but like, are there ideas out there for if you ever did put together a display in a storefront or any type of theme, I'll say, obviously not talking about spirit. Yeah, sure. So I'd never want to infringe on any company for any reason. I don't believe in infringement. I believe in entirely original ideas. And with that being said, what I would do with my displays is I would have each individual animatronic with their own corresponding display. Basically, if we have a clown, there might be like a circus tent over him or a carnival tent, and that'd be the little display for that animatronic. We've seen this from other stores a little bit, but basically my entire store would have each animatronic in their own little mini displays that correspond with it it'd also be a costume store it'd have masks it'd have your tabletops it'd be just displays for each character and i think they'd be really really unique and again skull cream would be like an entirely unique store from the ground up by the haunters for the haunters that actually that's a really cool idea i would love to see um a store possibly your storefront have something like that of showcasing animatronics like within their own element and showing the things that the theme they kind of are um, and I think that would be a really cool idea of having mini displays with all animatronics. Um, and I think it would be a great way of really showcasing a single character. And it would be a great way of getting a point across and, hey, this is the clown. Um, this is how he's meant to be displayed. And this is how he can look with his kind of backdrop and with his kind of theme. Um, and I think that's an awesome idea. Um, those are all of the main questions I have for you. The, the kind of uh, overhead main questions that I have. Um, so the bloody bonus for Skull Crane is if you turned on the TV and you saw it was a zombie apocalypse, who would you call first and what would you tell them to bring you? That's a fun question. I mean, I'm not sure who I'd call first. Maybe my girlfriend. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure what she could necessarily do in a zombie apocalypse. I'm sure I'd be the one scrambling, but I don't know. Uh, Maybe just a phone call to calm me yeah. down because that pretty much spooked me if that was real. <laughs> yeah, so there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Skull Cream would just want a phone call to calm down. Uh, apocalypses are scary situations, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so this was a ton of fun. That's going to wrap up this episode of Channel 1031 um, with Skull Crane. I had a ton of fun filming this. We got into uh, some real depth, uh, real in depth discussions of Skull Crane, his future plans, things he would like to do, um, and some animatronics. That he would like to work on again all of the things that he cited the website the membership the email list everything he was talking about um i will link at the top of the description i highly recommend you go check out everything he's talking about um he has a bright future ahead skull crane is definitely something to keep your eyes on there's some cool stuff coming and i 100 percent recommend you go check out everything that he has um out so that you don't miss anything for his future plans uh, again that's going to wrap up this episode of channel 1031 uh, remember every Friday 6 p.m. Eastern only on GM Haunts right where you're watching brand new episode brand new guests every week I got some cool people planned for the future. You're definitely not gonna want to miss it ladies and gentlemen remember as always for everything scary I'm GM Haunts. I see you guys later for more channel 1031 episodes Goodbye all right, so before the video ends, I just wanted to send one last thank you out to Skull Crane for creating a brand new promo code just for this episode of Channel 1031. Again, if you go to SkullCrane.com, you can purchase anything on his website, any Halloween animatronic, any prop, or any tabletop item, anything you can find. And if you use code GMHaunts at checkout, you will get 15% off your entire purchase. It's an awesome deal. You can really pick up some cool stuff off his website, and I really recommend you jump on this deal. Again, thank you so much to Skull Crane for creating this offer. I really, really appreciate it. It, and again, use code GM Haunts. Reverse all ways for everything scary. I'm GM Haunts. I'll see you guys later for more Channel 1031 episodes.